Okay, so I'm going to talk about Gale courses. Um, is anybody, if, does anybody here have Gale, Gale courses in their library? Okay, good. Um, okay, so I'm not from the library, I'm from the co-op, so I don't actually have live examples of patron feedback or anything, but I did um, go to Beyond Hope earlier this week, and um, one of our libraries uh, in the north, uh, Fraser Lake, Audrey from Fraser Lake, presented on it. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what she said, um, but first I'm going to talk about how it's different from Linda, just because it's, it is actually quite different. Yes, it's courseware, uh, but the model's quite different. Um, so with Gale courses, uh, you actually sign up for a course with an actual live instructor. Um, it's a, they're six, week long, six weeks long, and I think there's courses that start every month. So you actually have to sign up for a particular six months. So in, in some ways, it's less flexible. Well, I guess in a lot of ways, it's less flexible. But the advantages are that you have an actual instructor that you can contact. Um, there's a forum where you can discuss with other students and the instructors interacting in there. So it's a little bit it's it's, it's a little bit different. Um, interestingly, you can, there are public performance rights. So if you want to get a group together in your library to um, use the course in, in that way, so you can watch the, the instructor teach the class as a as a group. So um, I believe the BPL did that a number of years ago with Gale courses. Um, and I, I think it was quite successful. Um, uh, so that's, that's kind of how um, Gale works. Um, in terms of the content, um, there aren't as many courses. I think there's about 300 to 350 courses offered at any one time. Um, and they're on the topics that I think would interest most libraries, uh, professional development type topics, uh, technology skills, software courses, um, and personal development. Um, oh, there's also ESL courses, there's an early childhood literacy course that's running right now, so it, it really runs the, the gamut of, of, all kinds of, uh, of all kinds of courses. Um, so Audrey and Fraser, like, it was really interesting to hear how uh, she's using it in her community. Um, and Jennifer talked about this with, with Linda as well. Um, she, she's, they're partnering with a lot of community groups um, in the region to use the course with, for staff development, um, for client, like in the case of Northern Health, for client development. Um, so I think that's it's a really interesting segue for libraries to connect with community groups. Um, and, and in particular in the North where they, you know, in Fraser Lake, they don't have a college. Um, so it's really great for them to be able to connect, um, uh, you know, their patrons with courses um, and really fill that need that um, um, community college, uh, they have to go quite a distance to attend. So I think it's been really great in the smaller community. Um, there are MARC records available. Um, I already said yes, public performance rights. Let's start out in here. So we do have pricing through the co-op. Um, it's a consortium model, which is a little different if you approach the vendor directly. You would get pricing for your library. And the way it works with consortia is you purchase a number of seats at a deep discount. And then the libraries would be billed just for the seats that they use. Makes any sense. And then I can share price. I don't have the pricing here, but I can share that. If you're interested, send me a note. Uh, but that's it. Any questions about that? 